Janet Paschal is an inspirational vocalist and writer, often hailed as one of the most soulfully versatile voices in Christian music. From the pulpit of her grandfather's church in Reedsville, North Carolina, to the world's most renowned stages, Pascal's journey is marked by passion and dedication. With more than 20 recordings to her credit, her passion and vulnerability are evident in her inspiring music. Her recordings have earned numerous Grammy and Dove Award nominations, and she is consistently named among gospel music's favorite soloists by the genre's top trade magazines. Pascal grew up in a musical family. Her dad and his brothers played bluegrass instruments and sang in churches in neighboring states, while Janet and her sister Kay played piano and formed their own gospel singing group. At 18 years old, Pascal was invited to audition for the gospel singing family, the Lefevers. They hired her on the spot, and Janet left her small town and moved to Atlanta. After two years, the group changed its name to the Rex Nealon Singers, and they became one of Southern gospel music's most sought after singing groups. A few years later, she was invited to travel and perform as a soloist for the televangelist Jimmy Swaggart's International Crusades. She performed to tens of thousands in arenas and stadiums around the world and shared the stage with presidents and high profile personalities. Another soldier's coming home. In 1986, Janet signed with Word Records and moved to Nashville. Janet would go on to pen songs such as Another Soldier's Coming Home, God Will Make a Way, The Body and the Blood, and If I'd Had My Way. Shortly afterwards, Pascal was invited to tour with Bill and Gloria Gaither, becoming a featured artist on Gaither's homecoming tour. After battling breast cancer in 2005, Pascal resumed her touring schedule, including concerts, women's conferences, and cancer awareness events. In November 2008, she released her best-selling literary work, Treasures of the Snow, which chronicled her triumphant battle with cancer, as well as stories from three decades in gospel music. Pascal's travels have taken her to six continents, performing in such venues as Carnegie Hall, the Kennedy Center, and the Sydney Opera House. Janet started a radio program, Walking the Good Road, which airs on more than 30 stations in the U.S. and Canada. She began the annual Cancer Walk at Gospel Music's premier week-long festival, NQC. Whether it's through her radio show, books, or music, Janet Pascal truly has earned the accolades bestowed on her. Through the triumphs and challenges of life, Janet Pascal remains faithful to God and committed to use her extraordinary talent to inspire the world. History will show her alongside those who have dedicated their lives to a calling with eternal benefits. The Gospel Music Association salutes Janet Pascal with this well-deserved induction into the GMA Hall of Fame. Now we recall a few more memorable moments from Janet's career. Please welcome the Martins and Taranda.
Inducting Janet is an acclaimed songwriter who has penned some of the most eloquent and enduring hymns of our time. Please welcome 1997 inductee into the GMA Gospel Music Hall of Fame, Gloria Gaither. After a long and varied career in gospel music, there is no one more qualified to be named to the Gospel Music Hall of Fame than Janet Pascal. Soloist, songwriter, recording artist, and communicator, Janet has earned her place in this prestigious community. But it is not just her professional profile that should recommend her for this honor tonight. This particular honor should be judged not only by the notoriety of one's public profile or accomplishments, but also by the depth and quality of one's character. Not just that we sing about the gospel, but that we write the good news with the life pen of our days. Janet is my personal friend. I have lived with her on the road, compacted into the small space of a tour bus. Bill and I have watched her interact with backstage personnel, catering cooks, janitors, and children who wanted her autograph. I've seen her dressed like a runway model and in her pajamas with no makeup discussing over morning coffee the reality of where the tire of faith meets the pavement of real life. I have seen her mastering stock market figures and giggling over jokes only girlfriends would get. I've observed others perceive her as a fragile Alice in Wonderland in black patent leather slippers when I knew her to be a steel magnolia intent on finishing her academic degree while nauseated by the side effects of the chemo she was taking to fight and survive breast cancer. In all of her public and private personae, I have witnessed a strong woman of integrity and deep personal commitment to the Christ of the gospel she sings about. My mother was a lover of fine fabrics. She had a saying to describe a person like Janet. She would say, she is all wool and a yard wide. By that she would mean that what that person was made of were fibers woven on the wide loom of life, the woof and the warp, so strong and durable that no matter what side of the cloth you examined, you could count on consistency and beauty. This is what we call integrity. Tonight, we right, rightly recognize a strong, beautiful woman of integrity. This well-earned reputation has preceded and will long outlive any honor we can bestow tonight. Indeed, her life has instead lent credibility to the organization and the community of gospel music into which we so rightly induct her. Exactly 17 weeks ago tonight, I sat in the surgical waiting room at Cone Medical Center in Greensboro, North Carolina. My dad, who was 86 at the time, had emergency surgery, triple bypass, and an aortic valve replaced. We were told that the Chances were not really good, but that the surgery would take about nine hours if he survived it. Throughout the night, I checked emails and texts on my phone. I received a lot of texts and emails from friends who were praying for my dad, encouraging us. And at one point, I picked up my phone and I saw an email from the Gospel Music Association while sitting in the surgical waiting area about this very honor. 
I once heard a preacher say that joy and pain travel parallel roads and that they both arrive about the same time. He was so right. <laughs> Never was that more obvious to me than sitting in the surgical waiting room 17 weeks ago. I confess that this honor is one that was never even on my radar. This was a dream too big, a, a result too ambitious. So thank you, GMA, for your gracious, gracious favor. And thank you, my dear friends and my family, for decades-long friendships and for sharing the entire journey with me. I love all of you, and every year I value you more and more. Thank you to my husband, John, 20 years and counting. Thank you to my dear family, who are all more talented than I. It is especially exciting to have both my mom and my dad here tonight. <laughs> Dad is the new poster child for Cone Medical's Cardiac Center. Thank you, dearest Gloria, Taranda, Joyce, Judy, and Jonathan. You are each without equal, in my opinion, and I am grateful to all of you. And thank you, Lord, because tonight joy traveled the road alone. God bless you all. Thank you so much.